1943, American psychologist Abraham Maslow published his paper, A Theory of Human Motivation, in the journal Psychological Review. In it, he outlines one of the most influential and widely known ideas of 20th century psychology, what's now known as Maslow's Hierarchy of Needs. Physiological needs are things like air, water, food, sleep, clothes, and shelter. Culture, climate, and identity will, of course, impact how these needs are met. Safety needs include health, personal security, emotional security, and economic security. We need to be in a relatively safe environment, free of violence and abuse, in order to thrive at this level. We meet our belonging and love needs and avoid loneliness by connecting with our kin, whether friends, partners, or family. Our social esteem needs are met by self-respect and respect from others. Our cognitive needs are met by activities that require deliberation and brainstorming, and our aesthetic needs are met by nature's splendor, beautiful imagery, or novel and aesthetically pleasing experiences. Lastly, the ultimate goal, self-actualization, is met by the realization of one's full potential. At least, that's how it was initially. Maslow eventually included self-transcendence, the fullest realization in giving oneself to something beyond oneself, at the top of the hierarchy during the last few years of his life. The whole idea is commonly portrayed as a pyramid, even though Maslow never did. A consulting psychologist named Charles McDermott first came up with the pyramid in 1960 and it took off. Also, Maslow didn't view his hierarchy of needs like a video game, where you just go from one level to the next, unlocking them as you go along. He made it quite clear that we are always going back and forth in the hierarchy. We can target multiple needs at the same time, and the order in which needs emerge is not fixed. It may be better to portray his theory as a ladder, since when you're on a ladder, multiple rungs are occupied by the feet and hands, and you can move up and down the ladder as circumstances change. Maslow's idea, like every idea, has faced criticism over the past few decades. However, a lot of them are based on management professor Douglas McGregor and consulting psychologist Charles McDermott's simplifications and misrepresentations of his ideas. The main criticisms have centered the ranking of the needs, like how ranking order would vary from culture to culture based on circumstances, especially between individualistic and collectivist societies. And folks have also rightfully pointed out that sex shouldn't be on the same level as food and breathing for obvious reasons. Despite its critics, Maslow's hierarchy remains one of the most popular frameworks for sociology research, management training, and psychology instruction. But perhaps we should be looking elsewhere for guidance. Perhaps there's another perspective, one above the individualist scope, that can motivate us to question not only our personal development, but also the very structure of our society. Let's explore what Maslow encountered at Six Seeker and what we can learn from the Blackfoot philosophy. Before I begin, special thanks to Teju Ravilokan, founder of gather 4 and Medium.com, who wrote the article that inspired this video and provided most of the research for it. Be sure to check out his article, link below. Our journey begins in the summer of 1938, when Abraham Maslow spent six weeks with his six seeker Blackfoot near so-called Alberta, Canada. The story of the Six Seeker people actually begins long before then, with an oral history that stretches back 10,000 years in the region. But our journey begins here. Alongside anthropologists Lucian Hanks and Jane Richardson Hanks, Maslow intended to test his theory on social hierarchy and dominance. However, what he found there completely upended some of his earlier hypotheses. Rather than finding a quest for dominance among the Six Seeker, Maslow found high levels of cooperation, egalitarianism, restorative justice, and mutual aid. In essence, contrary to the mainstream American focus on the success of the individual, Maslow found a society that left no one behind. A society where self-actualization, not atomization or alienation, was the norm. Let's take a closer look. Take, for example, the six seeker way of parenting. In our society, Parenting most often takes the form of strict domination, discipline, and control. Children are viewed as property to be domesticated and indoctrinated. 
children have little say in every aspect of their lives. In contrast, Maslow found that the sick seeker afforded their children liberty and equality. Treated as equal members of sick seeker society, children still developed a natural respect for their elders and a desire to serve the broader community from a young age. Extended intergenerational kinship networks of relatives and non-relatives alike helped foster the child's development as parenting was viewed as a collective responsibility of the community. Parenting was seen as a practice of leading by example, not controlling behavior through corporal punishment. Here's another example. Wealth. In our society, wealth is measured through the accumulation and hoarding of capital, like money and property. However, the Six Seeker Blackfoot measured wealth by generosity. At giveaway ceremonies, communities bonded and strengthened ties by compiling everything that each member of the tribe had collected over the past year, sharing stories of how they amassed such wealth, and sharing their possessions to those in need. Lastly, let's take a look at justice. In our society, carceral logic pervades our understanding of justice on every level. But how do the Six Seeker handle quote-unquote negative deviance? those who harm individuals within the community. Well, the Six Seeker wouldn't call them deviants, obviously, and they would see them as redeemable, so long as they left that harmful behavior, whatever it was, behind. Unlike Maslow's hierarchy of needs, the Six Seeker didn't have a neatly codified model of their worldview. They had their spiritual beliefs and long-standing traditions, as do other indigenous peoples across Turtle Island. Island. While First Nations are different in many ways, their perspectives have significant philosophical overlap that's worth exploring. For one, many First Nations communities see self-actualization as something we are born as, not something we must spend our lives striving for. Self-actualization is not something we must work to earn, but something innate that we live out every day. Thus, children are treated with respect and dignity and are given the space to express who they are. As opposed to the individualistic culture that plagues capitalist society today, the Blackfoot and other First Nations peoples see the work of meeting basic needs, ensuring safety, and creating the conditions for the expression of purpose as a community responsibility. Community actualization allows all members to focus on their position in the web of relations that supports them all, a web of relations that includes the land they're a part of. When our lives are bound up in the lives of others, we learn generosity, trust, forgiveness, patience, kindness, and cooperation. What Maslow failed to incorporate, at least in his original paper, was the place of the individual in the context of community. Rather than a model that prized individual actualization and transcendence, Maslow's model could have centered the importance of multi-generational community actualization and cultural perpetuity. Through rituals and apprenticeships alike, First Nations peoples transfer wisdom from one generation to the next so that the tribe's communal nourishment and wisdom can be preserved. By considering their actions through the lens of seven generations, they can be informed by the wisdom of the distant past and consider the consequences in the distant future. Ultimately, this philosophy should be understood not through a pyramid, but through a circle. Our needs are highly interdependent and situationally flexible, not uniformly hierarchical, and a circular model allows us to capture the ever-shifting nuances of our needs as individuals rooted in a community. Unfortunately, indigenous communities have faced continuous violence of the state, damaging relationships and cultural connections that many of us are now working tirelessly to restore. Our global capitalist society is one where dissatisfaction is the norm and satisfied people are the exception. Basic physiological needs, like food, water, and shelter, are locked behind a paywall. Our safety needs are undermined by the violence and precarity of the status quo. Our belonging and love needs are disrupted by the atomizing forces of the capitalist machine. And our social esteem needs have been corrupted by the petty pursuit of social media validation. We're deprived of our cognitive needs by our forced commitment to busy work in service of profits, and our aesthetic needs are an afterthought in a world committed to a trajectory of total ecocide. And of course, we have little space for self-actualization in the narrow course we're forced into for the sake of survival. The only way we can change this destructive order is if we shift the burden of meeting our needs from the individual 
to the community. While the full realization of that aim lies in the overthrow of capitalism through a combination of prefiguration and insurrection, the first step is rejecting the story of rugged individualism we've been sold so that we can embrace the story of communal interconnectedness necessary for all of us to thrive. Through our relationships and our organizing efforts, through the exercise of our collective imagination, wherever we find ourselves, we can create viable alternatives. Peace. Thanks for watching. Please like, comment, subscribe, and share with fellow people. Thanks once again, of course, to the family, including our newest members, Hugo Tunjik and Kardashev Join these beautiful humans and support me too on patreon.com slash saintrue. Check out all my other videos for a range of radical topics. Follow me on Twitter at underscore saintrue. Thanks again. Peace.